Hey guys, this video is brought to you by G Fuel Energy. G Fuel is the official energy drink of eSports. I love G Fuel because it's a healthy alternative to any other energy drink. G Fuel is filled with vitamins and minerals. It has zero carbs, zero sugars, and 15 calories. My favorite flavor this week is clickbait. It tastes so good and it helps me be better at all of the video games I like to play on Twitch. G Fuel is available in lots of gas stations nationwide, or you can go online and use the code Natalie for a special discount. All right, let's start the show. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Help with Natalie Cuomo. I am here with my good friend, producer, designer, creator, artist, podcaster. Thank you. Ani Moosh. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing, Ani? I'm good. It, I was just about to say, like, it, it's so cool to actually see, be in this seat and see the intro because I'm normally behind the camera. But I'm like, oh, yeah, that's my art up there. Yes. <laughs> that's kind of cool. <laughs> Thank you for having me on. It's an honor. Thank you for doing the podcast. I'm so happy you're here. Same. Me too. We just recorded an episode of Ani's podcast. Yes, House Ho. House Ho. Yes. And I was like, hold up a second. <laughs> Sound effect. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put a record scratch there for you. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, all right, Ani <laughs> needs to be on my podcast. <sighs> So I would love to know, I'd love to just start it out understanding what is the best advice you have ever received? Oh my God. You know, I've been like secretly thinking about this question every single time you ask. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, how do people even narrow it down? It is, it's a really good question and it's a difficult question, I think. Because totally. I've, I've been uh, given a lot of, I think, unsolicited advice, but that has actually ended up working out. <laughs> um, but... The best advice, uh, it's hard. Um, I think, hmm, can I give you a couple? Can I give you my top and we can Please. like figure it out? <laughs> Please. Um, I think one of the first things is, uh, I used to tell myself this a lot, is like catch flights, not feelings, but then someone kind of rephrased it into you can't heal in the same place that made you sick. I like that. Which I like kind of live my life by. <laughs> um, and like for through my 20s, I mean, my whole life, I've been like a big like travel person. But uh, and just because I, I like to understand different perspectives and things like that, I think it helps you understand just people and like intuition better. Mm -hmm. um, but at some at there, there are many points that I use it as like a vessel to like all right, let me get over the situation and like leave it somewhere, you know? And I think it's it, it can be very healing too. I guess so. that makes me think of two things. Yeah. So one agrees and one disagrees with yeah. that statement. The first is I do feel like whenever I'm overthinking something or like in a bad mood about something, my butt is itchy. Whenever <laughs> I'm thinking like that way, if I leave the room, I tend to feel better. Like mm -hmm. if I go for a walk, if I go upstairs, I tend to like leave those thoughts in the room, just like yeah. that simple action. Yeah. But, you know, then it also makes me think of a lot of people will be going through a hard time and they'll like move across the country yeah. or they'll, you know, ch make a, a drastic change to, to their location mm -hmm. and they'll still have the same problems in their life. Mm -hmm. So I think that's kind of like an interesting counter argument to that. Yeah. Like, do you feel like what do you feel like is that distinction between travel and then just kind of being sure. like, I'm not going to change things in my life. I'm just going to move from New York to L.A. and then <laughs> fingers crossed that like my life is better. Um, well, one d great question. But one is like, I think, more permanent than the other, because it, for me, like I was always coming back, you know, like I was always coming back home to like home base. But sometimes you just it's the same thing like when you just need to go for a walk you know like do a lap mm -hmm. <laughs> something right. like that um there's like so many times where like we'll have like an argument or i'll just be upset about something but like if i just get out of the house it helps a lot to just obviously clear your head and you can refocus and i uh as an adult was diagnosed with add and a lot of other disorders but i mean it helps me to understand in context, oh, that's what I was doing. I was just trying to reset myself with intention because 
a lot of the times like these trip like quick trips or whatever that was going on it's like a trip you would take in your 20s or whatever you know with your friends or whatever the case may be but i was going to like i'm like oh i can't wait so that i can forget about this other thing and then when i come back i will be in a better mindset and that's just kind of like I've just applied that over and over again where if you feel uncomfortable, like, and this was sort of like the second important advice that I've been given, if you feel uncomfortable, understanding those feelings is really important, but like going through it, like the journey is through, you know, like that is what you're supposed to do. Um, and if you can get through that, you're a stronger person and you learn and grow so much more and then you can understand and help other people. Um I think like being able to apply like anything that I've learned and give like that back, like that's been really important in my life. So I don't know that just being able to recycle that. I feel like you have one of these, one of your pieces of art that's hanging on your wall says like growth is supposed to hurt a little bit or something oh, yeah. like that. Um, growth is, can also feel like loss. Remember that that's what, yeah, that's what it says. Yes. Exactly. And I love that. That's something that I tell people sometimes too. Because oh yeah. After seeing that you, put that out mm -hmm. because um like can you tell me a little bit about where you came up with that because I think that oh is my God. <laughs> such a good piece of advice and it's something that I mean it's so true you really can't grow the same way like oh you can't it's so cliche like you can't be happy if you've never been sad but it's like I think yeah. a lot of like the big growths and the big changes in in my life and a lot of people's life kind of had to come with um some sort of loss sure um but I think that 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 sentiment can be applied in so many ways. And I've learned that more recently, I would say in the past like five or six years of my life, um, which coincidentally is when I like also started going to therapy, but you know, like realizing that there was something I needed to figure out deeper. And the, that specific piece of art actually came. It's funny because we were talking about questions from, uh, I think that there were people who were submitting earlier, mm -hmm. something about like a friend sort of divorce situation. Mm -hmm. And, um, I was, ha I was going through something like that recently and I still am. And it was a reminder that just because I'm growing and someone doesn't agree with everything that I'm doing, it doesn't mean that it's not okay or it, it's, it's okay to grow and it's okay for people to not agree with like how you're doing it. Um, also when you feel like things are taken from you that like you worked really hard for or really long for, you had a long relationship with somebody 10 years or <laughs> you moved to New York for an industry and then like a situation happened and you have to reshift like, that remembering that like the same feeling that I had of growth, like that fear, but excitement, I get that with grief too. And it's just part of the process. Like I, I'm always going through the like acceptance, denial, anger. Like I feel like all my life, like over and over and over again. And uh, that is the circle of life. So if, if you can remember that in any scenario, no matter how bad it is, you're growing. And that Sam Buck actually says this a lot too, that the, the top of the level that you're on is like the bottom of the next or like the bottom of the next level is the top of the one that you're on right now. So like you're getting to the next level, but you have to get through that level and that in that you're growing. So I think that that's kind of where that came from, just going through all of that process. I want to really have people understand you because you're one of the most... <laughs> impressive people that I know and this is something Thank that I you. say about Ani and I I have said this to you a million times and I've said this to other people Ani is one of the first people that I've worked with that I feel like in a very long time that I feel like actually has something to contribute creatively like Ani and I'm not just like sucking your dick right now <laughs> because whatever but Ani is like very brilliant creatively like you really are Thank and you. for anyone listening that's not familiar like Tell us a little bit about what you do, what too much content is, oh, like yeah. what you've created. Like you are an entrepreneur, you're a businesswoman and you're an artist. Just tell us a little bit about yourself, your businesses and the things that you do. Oh my God. Thank you. Um, huge compliment. <laughs> I do a lot of things, but um, my background is in design, specifically like interior architecture, interior design and management. Um, I have like two degrees in that and I did that professionally for like 10 years. Um, and I still do that today a little bit, but for myself. Um, and now for the past almost three years, Irish and I have had 
this business, too much content, which has like just exponentially grown beyond what I thought it was going to be at this point. I'm, it continues to like, imp- I continue to impress myself. Um, but it went from us just like having our own podcasts and uh, just wanting to have some kind of little like network of people who we really liked cross pollinating with and all that. And then uh, it just grew when COVID started and podcasts were really like taking over. Um, and we ended up moving here. We brought our business here and we were like, at least in our immediate people we were kind of like experts in like remote podcasting at that point because we were sort of the only ones like that we knew who were doing it at the very jump um because we were doing it before covid as well um so i don't know it just kind of like kept growing and growing and then we moved into this space because we were in our when we first moved here it was just like a room with like our, our bed and that couch and a table and that was it um and now we have like this space and like my my hopes is to continue to grow it um we work with so many talented people a lot of them comics and that people who have just like really something that we feel like is contributing to like the greater good and we're very specific with who we work with like we we want to be happy when we're when we're when we're working every day and uh, people come into our home and so like that that's something that I've just like learned over time um through my art in order for me to be happy and do my art well you have to work with people who want to work with you as an artist um, and not just, like, be hired by any random individual. You know what I mean? So, I mean, of course that works, yes. But, like, what's making it fruitful for me is that. Um, so that's led me up through this point. But even before all of this, I mean, I've been painting with acrylic uh, and ink for since I was, like, three. <laughs> like, so long, long time. Um, and I, I that's my, like place of expression is art so if I can do that every day in some way that I'm happy so you and Irish created a podcast studio inside of your New York City apartment we did so you guys live in New York you move here and you're like we are going to create a podcast studio inside our New York City apartment Mm -hmm. you've done a beautiful job what is for me I have a similar (laughs) Very different situation, but <laughs> similar in the sense that I live in my mom's basement, mm-hmm. okay, and I have this one room, and in it is my bed, and then right next to it is my Twitch setup, right, mm-hmm. where I stream. Mm-hmm. So I stream, and I sleep kind of – it's in the same room. You guys have two different, like, spaces, spaces for yeah. it, but, you know, it's difficult for me to create that separation between mm-hmm. work and uh, sleep or mm-hmm. rest – What is it like for you to create that kind of separation when your work is literally in your, it's in your home and you and Irish both have like this incredible work ethic. I mean, you basically, you started this business together Mm -hmm. and it's very successful. So how do you create that separation? Um, It's equally incredibly difficult and also very easy. So, (laughs) I mean, at times you do have to remember, like, I I have a big thing about like doing work in the living room versus like the studio like kind of depending on what it is because I want to you know treat it with the severity that it deserves you know so just having like strict rules about that but like when we were in a studio apartment with literally all of this um I mean just creating a, a, a definite line between this corner is like work corner and I'm not gonna bring work over to my bed um I, when I lived at home, I s- stupidly opted to get rid of my desk, which was a terrible idea because then I was just doing work on my bed and whether it was like homework or like professional work or anything like that. But then you can't sleep because you as- your brain associates your your work with where you're resting. So you have to have that separation um, in some way. So like there are small rules that you can make for yourself like that that aren't like really that big of a deal um I can definitely help you (laughs) so I I do work every I mean I do work on the toilet I do work in my bed like I I I mean I'm not even pooping I'm just peeing but I bring my laptop in because I miss it like I (laughs) so you're workaholic love to work I love I love just sitting and I sit on my bed and I work. I, I I don't really like to sit at my desk and work I only sit at my desk when I'm streaming and Mm -hmm. then otherwise I work on my bed, a hundred percent. And yeah. I think it's because as a kid, 
I would my ba- the bathroom was the only door with a lock on it. So usually I would just if I had an essay, I would literally lock the door of the bathroom and like sit in the bathroom and mm-hmm. write or I would sit on my bed in my bedroom. Mm-hmm. So like those are the two places that I was like, OK, these are productive for me for some weird fucking reason. Yeah, because at that time, that was what your like that age brain was like, this is what I need to do to right. survive. But like to update those parts and be like, I can do this here now. <laughs> I just don't know why. I'm like, I don't want to. I, I like the thought of like sitting at a table and writing is just like. I mean, have you thought about sitting on like a couch or a poof? I don't have a... room for another table in the basement. What about <laughs> what about a couch elsewhere? A poof. If you had the perfect situation, uh, what would you have? Tell me. Uh, Let's build it right now. Oh my god. Let's build it. Let's build your fantasy right now. <sighs> Two bedroom apartment. Ah. Uh. One room and it's uh, got my stream set up. It's got a desk where I'm working. It's also got a couch where I can work. A oh nice my. big couch like the one you have. Like I would work L- on that nice couch. Nice elch in the corner mm. with and a couple oh, cushions. Oh, an L-shaped couch. Now we're talking. Oh, we got some throw blankets, <laughs> faux fur throw blankets from Ooh. West Elm. Oh, my God. And in one of those fuzzy rugs for you. Oh, my God. And an ottoman. Okay, I'm getting really turned and on. And a weighted blanket. Uh, Think of all the things you could do. I want heated floors. <laughs> you can have that. Okay, I need this. I'm getting excited for you. I just <laughs> took out another credit card. No, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I just want a two bedroom apartment. I mean, I don't think that's some. I could, I could settle for a one bedroom. Mm-hmm. But I know. I mean, let's go for I two. Know. Dream big, baby. I know. Dream, dream big. big. I'm 27. I think nowadays too. I mean, it's not unreasonable to ask if that's like where you're doing primary, like most of your work. You know what All I mean? All of like, my work. Yeah. It's like having an office. You know what I mean? And like, in theory, like. All of us could fucking go in on an office space and like we each have a door we can close behind us. It's the same shit, you know, but like we just choose to do this more comfortably. I do. You know? Yes. I just do. I feel like I definitely feel like in the next six months that is like 100 percent. Oh, yeah. My uh, we can do this. Yeah. But just like having that separation, having some windows, it would really make a difference. For yeah, me. windows are huge. Natural light is huge. Like, I think you, that's why I, I tell you in the morning, like, go touch grass. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm need, just like, you need to get some like sunlight, even if it's just through the window. Like, you know what I mean? I love. I mean, I love being able to save money, but also yeah. it's like. It's just so, this like the feeling that ownership over your space. I've always felt like very connected to my space and mm-hmm. very into like nesting. I have this like intense motherly gene. I know I've talked to you about it a bunch, yeah, but it's just like, same I definitely A, feel like this innate need to be a mother and then B, feel like this nesting gene. Like I just want to create my home base and I yeah. almost like where I live, I've it's almost like it's so, um, what's the word, tra- like, transient yeah. that I don't even feel like I don't even feel like I'm going to hang up art on the walls. I don't even feel like I want to buy stuff to like make it nice because I know I'm not going to be there forever. You know what I would suggest that you do because I had this similar sort of feeling when I was living at home and like I knew I was it was going to take time and whether I ended up renting in between or whatever or just living at home like I knew that I wasn't going to have all the things on my walls that I wanted at the time still put up whatever I could but I have I had a box like a tub mm-hmm. where I would just buy things when I saw them that I was like if I had a house right now I would want this like little thing for like my kitchen like these salt and pepper shakers or something like something like that because mm-hmm. then it becomes a little bit more real and I like still ha- the <laughs> that household thing that you made me the where it's on the shelf next to that like little Vespa and pizza thing mm-hmm. th- that's the salt and pepper shakers that I bought Aww, like years and years so ago and uh, yeah, thank you and I'm just I knew in my life, I'm like, I just, you know, whatever. And it just, it's a reminder later on when you get that, like, oh, I did it, you know, right. and I can do it again, you know? Um, interesting. Well, yeah. you, rem- that reminds me of your coloring book. Ah, yes. <laughs> so you are a, a woman of many projects and your latest project, which is amazing, is you designed a coloring book. Mm-hmm. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? I would love to. I hope that by the time that this podcast is out, my editor would have gotten back to me and it will actually be out because that would be fantastic. But yeah, um, I designed a coloring book and it is very personal um, it's 12 pages and it is meant to like take you on a journey. 
Um, I started it, I officially started it in September of 2021. And my intention was just to like, I, I was, at the time I was like really big into routine, which I still am, but I had gone through a little bit of trauma and like in order to get back into like a healthy person, like I just needed that routine. And part of that morning routine was like sketching and like watching documentaries or like listening to audiobooks and blah 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 and like when we moved to New York I did shrooms for the first time <laughs> and I had all I wanted to do like the first time I ever did shrooms was just draw and I had like found I, I, I drew them on like postcard sized uh, like sheets of whatever um, and I was like oh this would be really cool to like make into like a coloring book <laughs> like some of these like postcards from my trip is what I was calling them which is like the name of the book um and the each m sort of step is supposed to be like significant of a month so you can start it whenever you want but like the point is as you're coloring is sort of remembering what the mantra is that you're coloring in at that time so the first one for instance is um there are no bad trips just difficult ones so as you're, the point is, is as you're coloring that is sort of like think about it. And then I have like a little blurb on the side of sort of what my intention was when I was thinking about this or drawing this and it kind of takes you through. And my hopes is that that will sort of help anybody else's in a situation like that. Or if you just feel like coloring, it's definitely an adult coloring book. So I don't know if I would give it to your kids, but <laughs> if you are someone who just needs to relax, like this is a really good exercise. Um, and there's, it's like a 12 step program, but <laughs> personal. <laughs> I love it. I love the art in it so much. I love, mm -hmm. I love the mantras in it. It's, thank it's you. incredible. I definitely want to buy prints of it because oh I God, have too much you. ADD to color, but <laughs> that is fucking awesome. Thank you. Yeah. It, it was, took a long time, but I'm very proud of it. I'm very proud of it. Definitely go check that out if it's out already and yeah. when it does come out. It's so funny because, I mean, I've talked about this on this podcast before and with you, but I have such a different relationship with shrooms as a drug. Mm -hmm. Like, I, when I was 16, I had a bad trip. And because of that, like, I just haven't been able to do shrooms again. And I mm -hmm. don't want to. I think I've, I just have a, such a subconscious negative association that, like, yeah. I'm not going to have a good time, so I'm just not going to do it. That was how I I had thought about shrooms until I was like 28, mm -hmm. honestly, um, because I, my my relationship in my life with drugs is like is a way. I've had friends who are addicts to all different types of things, who are in recovery, recovering all of the spiel. Um, people who don't think that they're addicts who absolutely are <laughs> and all of the above. But when like when I was in like high school and shit, like I didn't even want to smoke weed. Like I wasn't I wasn't even into like any of that stuff. I'm into understanding it. I'm into understanding people's perspectives about it. And I'm super open to talking about it. But I was not interested in like doing drugs. Um, in fact, like I had ended relationships when I was in high school for like over my boyfriends, like doing like fucking weed, <laughs> which like is ironic now. But um, like I started, I think I smoked weed the first time, like end of high school, like when I was a senior or something like that. And then I was fine. But still, I was not I did not have a, any interest in doing psychedelics at all, like mo through most of my 20s, like anything like that. And then when I did them. I ha I knew that if I ever felt comfortable, like I said, I would just want to draw. Like, I just wanted to, like, see how that felt. And when I did them for the first time, it was with Sam and with Irish. And they're both, like, my shamans. And I feel very comfortable around both of them. And, like, I felt safe. Uh, and they knew, like, what to do, like, in order for me to have a good time and, and how much I should take and all that, which how I would recommend if you were ever to try it. Like, do it someone who knows what they're doing, you mm -hmm. know? Like, being 16, like... I don't know how good of a trip we're going to have at 16, no I mean, matter what. The first what. time I tripped at 16, I had a great time. Yeah. The second time I didn't. Uh, yeah. It's just, you know, I was playing around. Yeah. You kind of got to know. I mean, the first, I've only done it, I would say maybe like two hands at this point or something over the course of like two years. And small, small, you know, you can micro dose, you can mm -hmm. like whatever, but I, how, knowing your environment and feeling safe in your environment is huge. Like I've only ever really had one kind of bad experience 
and I waited a little bit to like do them again, but it was like, I was with the group and they were watching like fight videos, which I so don't recommend. It's like, you don't want to like be seeing hate and stuff when you're like on mushrooms. Like no one wants that at all. Um, and that was the only time I just like didn't have a good time, but like the rest of the day was great. You know, I was like seeing like things were breathing and it was like very pleasant. I just like felt good and creative, you know, but if you're, if you do psychedelics and you're not dealing with something, like it will come up. And my knowledge with that beforehand was like, okay, well I know what could come up. And it's cool because it's just mushrooms and I'll be back and I can talk to my therapist later. <laughs> and like I'm in a safe space. If you can like get through that one part of it, you're fine. I feel like honestly, it, I, I'm i grateful that I had that bad trip yeah. because. Not peer pressuring you. <laughs> no, I have an addictive personality. Mm-hmm. And like I honestly, if I had kept up this like the, for when I had a good trip, I had a therapist in high school because like I was just that kind of person. Mm-hmm. And I had a good trip and I literally went to my high school therapist and I was like, <gasps> Dr. Like, you would not believe how much I love mushrooms. Like I have an addictive personality. Mm-hmm. And like if I hadn't had something that stopped me, like I probably would have just kept doing it until yeah. I had a bad time. And it's yeah. like, so I am grateful that like, I'm not into it, yeah. but you I don't have to. Be. And I, because I, I can see myself other time. I can see myself enjoying it because I did the mm-hmm. first time, but the extreme way that it can go wrong is not something that like I want to deal with. I'm just Absolutely. so sensitive. That's, that's so good to know. And like, if anybody's listening that feels the same way, like I would encourage you to stay with that feeling. Yeah. Like for me, when I first did it and second time or whatever, like I felt the healing part of it and like, what I needed to get through. And that was the reason why I was doing it, you know? So I think it's just it like with any type of medication, like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That, that should any drug that should be your, your thought process, like respect. (laughs) It's so like fucking woo woo, whatever, but you know, respecting the drug and like Aaliyah says, like, don't let the drug do you, you know what I mean? Um, it, that's, I totally would have let the drug. (laughs) I mean, I have to really, practice restraint with anything that that I I just become obsessed with whatever I love and Mm -hmm. like with my career that's amazing because being obsessed with your career can be the equivalent to success because you're putting all your energy into it but when you love things that are unhealthy or you aren't able to manage certain obsessions or certain fixations it's just not obsessed with anything isn't good like yeah. everything in moderation <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i mean like I- i'm one to talk like i've i've dude i work so much and right. but like i've tried really hard like with intention to find a better work-life balance for mm-hmm. myself and like some days just fucking being an entrepreneur is hard dude like the one thing that people like don't fucking get and and maybe this is my own problem but like if i'm venting about something in my business or like whatever to like a personal like my like I'll use my mom as an example, but you know, just like a friend or something, just because I'm bitching doesn't mean I'm upset Mm -hmm. or like that I have a problem. Like these are growing pains. This is what an entrepreneur or someone who's pursuing their dreams is just going to fucking go through. There are going to be hurdles. Of course, I'm going to tell you when the good shit is happening, but like you can't expect me to just tell you that. That's unrealistic. I'd like, uh, if you're asking me how work's going and today, like, oh, I had like, blah 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 to deal with or whatever and and it was a difficult situation then like yeah like something i have to deal with for my business but like will i get through it yeah will my business be better afterwards yes but like (laughs) of course i'm gonna bitch about that and i think um people who aren't in like a creative field sometimes like aren't as sensitive to that kind of thing you know i agree or maybe it's hard for them to figure out what you mean like I performed at this yeah. venue I performed at actually two venues recently that my mom was like Natalie I thought that like you didn't want to perform there anymore like mm-hmm. I thought that you didn't like that place and I was like no mom like I was just complaining about it yeah she's like oh okay and I was like no I was just like venting and she's like oh I didn't realize <laughs> I let me I have to actually ask your advice on this because like you've been in entertainment like way longer than I have been <laughs> in and I don't know if like I think you probably have a different relationship like with uh, entertainment anyways because you've been doing it for much longer. But in terms of explaining your art, like 
How many times have you had to do that to someone like in your personal life who has nothing to do with the entertainment industry? They're mm. just like a regular person. <laughs> like, like, has it been difficult? Like, what kind of co- like what's what's your style of comedy? Like, no, that? like let's just say like your uh, a best friend is mm-hmm. like I don't I don't get why what's a, why are you doing a podcast? Like, why do you have to go mm. do a room for like three people? Like, what like mm. how do you explain like this is part of it? And like get them on board because it's sometimes it's hard. Like I don't Mm. think you can always get everyone on board. I've had that challenge in my life. Like Mm. where like people are like, "Why are you in New York?" Like you like what? Like (laughs) you know what I mean? Totally. Like have you had to explain that to anyone in your life where they just don't get it or not really? Or it doesn't even have to be with entertainment. Maybe it's with something else. Yeah. I mean, I typically don't have more than one to two people in my life at a time. (laughs) Yes. But like your mom, right? Like your mom no, doesn't necessarily yeah, yeah. understand like all parents, that. Yeah. Um, I feel like I think it, it is a hard thing to explain, yeah. but it's just like, it's just like, yeah, you're just like, these are the things that I have to do. It's yeah. part. Of, it's kind of like, um, it's, it's just like you're, wor- I, you're working towards something. I've just been calling it reps. I'm like, I have to do it's this. It's rehearsal. It's, it's working towards something. It's putting yourself in like the space right like that i mean it's it's kind of one of those like uh like you'll see i guess if you don't <laughs> understand it like i guess in a few years yeah. maybe you'll understand it because you'll see the outcome yeah and i'm sorry for you if you don't understand it now but i don't even have fucking time to explain it that's to you. what i've started saying to people because it's just like well it's either th- then that's kind of how i know who's following my shit mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying like who's following closely in your life right you know I just feel like I like the idea of, I mean, I just, after a certain point, I'm just like, I don't have time to explain to you why I'm doing X, Y, and Z. And like my track record is showing me that like I, my gut has been right. Mm -hmm. So it's so funny when people are like, well, why are you posting this then? And like, you should be posting this when this happens. And like, you should be doing this. And I'm just like, I'll do whatever I want. (laughs) I'm like, okay, cool. I always think of this. I always think it's like a favor when I tell someone how I feel. And when it's negative and people think that I'm being cunty when I'm like, hey, by the way, it's not okay that you talk to me like this and it's not okay that you did this. But that's actually me being nice. It's me being nice because if I didn't care about you, you, I would just let you go do that thing. You could you would continue to do it to people. I'm doing you a favor Mm -hmm. by telling you why you're a piece of shit so you don't have to keep being a piece of shit and embarrassing yourself. Yeah. Hundred percent agree. It's you being honest, honestly. Honest, honestly. No, but this is a lesson. This is important advice. Mm -hmm. This is important advice for people to hear because all too often does this happen. It's like, what, just because I'm speaking my mind and like I, uh, you want me to just roll over and be like, okay, okay, okay. No, I'm not going to fucking do that. Right. First of all, I don't want anybody in my life who is a yes man. Ever, yeah, yeah. ever. I don't want someone who's gonna let me walk out of my house that I have like shit all over my face. I like, know, right? Fuck you, I have something on my teeth. Like, tell me, bitch. Like, <laughs> you know, like, it. I think I would rather someone say, hey, do you know, like, the, in your picture, like, whatever, than, than me wonder why I'm not getting any likes or something like that, or me have something on my forehead that fucking doesn't belong there. And like, I just don't know, you e- know? Even like a host at a comedy show. Like I remember specifically <laughs> like one host was just doing a terrible job, didn't understand like certain nuances of the right way to do something, sure. right? Mm-hmm. Obviously you don't want to just go up to a comedian that you don't know and mm-hmm. say anything. But like if you were close with someone and like we're like, hey, like, you know, you probably want to uh, like light someone from here and if you stand here for too long it gives them this idea like things that they don't know and if they continue to do them Mm -hmm. it's probably gonna make them look bad or come off a certain way that's like doing someone a favor yeah but you kind of seem like a dick when you're telling them hey like you're kind of doing this wrong yeah i mean like uh, i guess in those situations i just i kind of at that point don't care like especially if it has to do with like a show and reputation and somebody else's reputation, and even if you're on that show and this, that, whatever, like you want it to be a good overall performance mm-hmm. and experience. So, a saying that in that situation, I think, is completely valid. Fuck anyone who thinks differently. Like right? this is what, <laughs> what? <laughs> I would rather, and like, even if someone like comes with to me with an idea for like their podcast, for instance, I think it's stupid. I'm gonna tell you. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, because I'm not going to let you, A, go through the embarrassment of like, this is a bad idea. I don't think you should do it. And if you do it on your own, like, hey, man, like, I told you how I felt about it. So, like, you know. <laughs> but at the end of the day, like, I'll, I'll always be there. But, you know, like, if someone wants my advice, I'm going to give it to them, you know, because I want them to know when I'm genuinely giving them feedback that I mean it, you know. I was talking to my therapist about this in terms of like rejecting guys. Mm -hmm. I was like, should I tell a guy why I don't want to be with them? Like, I feel like sometimes I want, sometimes I want to tell them, like, I don't want to be with you because the way you talk to me like this Mm -hmm. really hurt my feelings. It made me feel objectified. It made me feel like you didn't care about me for me. And you were just like kind of seeing me as this like figure that you don't know. Mm -hmm. And then my therapist is like, no don't it don't you don't don't (laughs) go through the whole thing with them like you don't have to do that like that's don't make them hear all of that and i'm like yeah i'll i'll be honest with you like guys don't give a fuck yeah guys don't give a fuck if if they come back like and they don't get it like i would totally say that but like i I guess it kind of depends on like what level of rejection are we talking about is it like someone who's like sliding into your dms and you're just like oh i'm not really like feeling it or whatever or if it's someone in like a relationship and then you're like ah no like totally different but like if it's someone who's like sliding into your dms if you don't know them a you don't fucking owe them a response never right. mind like why you don't want to be with them like no i just mean like maybe someone you've been on like uh, just a couple someone dates that's with or you went on a date with or you talked a couple times and sure. they're being persistent and you just you want to say like i've had i've wanted to be like no that you are rude i don't I, like i seem like a dick rejecting someone because i'm the dick rejecting someone but from my perspective you're the dick because the way that you're trying who's to saying you're the court dick? me is rude who's saying you're the dick They are. They are. Oh, so the person who's trying to get you to do whatever they want anyways is also trying to <laughs> call you names and manipulate you that way? Well, I'm not even talking about a specific instance. No, I'm just I'm saying any, like... That archetype, you know? But yeah, yeah, I'm just saying like when you reject someone, do you should you tell them why? There are also times where I've been rejected and I've been like, why 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 i just wish i knew why why did they ghost me why did they ghost me i just want to understand like why don't they respond to my text anymore what did i do so i think it's it's a couple of things right so like first of all i've been in both situations a i've been in the situation where like a guy um that i like maybe was seeing for like a month or two or whatever who was calling me his girlfriend or whatever just uh, who i didn't even fuck by the way who i tried to fuck and we didn't then was kind of like oh like i just see us as x y and z and to me i'm like this is so fucking weird like blah 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 if they're telling you like no thanks then just it's fine like just take the no thanks like it works the other way too so like if you're just saying like hey i'm not interested like we had you know i had fun i don't want you to think i didn't have fun on like whatever date we went on but you know just not what i'm looking like i don't i just you know that's all I see you as whatever, yeah. you know, you don't have to get into it. You, you can, should, you, the answer is you really should not be getting into you it. You shouldn't, you, you shouldn't should not tell them why you don't like them. No, because also like anyone who's going to ask if, if it's out of the blue, like in, I mean, of course maybe someone will ask, but like, I, I don't think you have to get deep into it. If you have only went on a couple dates or like whatever, like you, it's not like you're dating for a long, like a year or like fucking moved in together or like yeah. have business together or some shit. Like if you've just gone on a couple of dates with someone, like you're just testing the waters anyways. This isn't an arranged marriage fucking situation. Totally. I remember like a year ago, I went on three Bumble dates with this guy mm-hmm. and then I kind of decided like I didn't really like him anymore. So I just ghosted him because I was immature and he was so upset. And then finally I was like, I'm sorry, you just didn't really act like you liked me. And so I don't know. I just... You didn't make me feel like you liked me. Mm -hmm. And he was like, well, I really liked you. So fuck you, fuck you and fuck your mother. And I was like, "Okay, (laughs) that's an example of why you shouldn't tell them. Yeah. Uh, Because then now what am I supposed to do? Well, this is awkward. There was no point in me telling you that. You didn't learn from that. I didn't learn from that. And I mean, that's 
that's not true though because you did learn that like you don't necessarily need to ghost someone you can just politely be like next time they ask me to hang out i'm just gonna politely decline to be quite frank i felt like he didn't like me enough to deserve that hey well then that's that is your prerogative then Mm -hmm. it's even less of a response there you go as she sips the one smart cookie mug I think you do. Like you said earlier, like there hasn't really been an instance where you're like, oh, my gut said this and it was wrong. Like even if you went against it at the end, I think you're kind of like, all right, I kind of knew like whatever. I've been in that situation um, when sometimes I'm just like, can I even fucking trust my gut at this point? Like I thought I was doing the right thing. But then when, when I really think back, I'm like, oh, yeah, it was right there the whole time. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I feel like. You kind of know the answer anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like I'm going to have some weed. Okay. Hell yeah. We're having the weeds. We're having. <laughs> I, do you need help? <laughs> this is a big, yeah. this is a big one. Here, bring it more towards you. Me? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. There you go. <laughs> Teamwork makes the dream work. Yes, it does. <laughs> this bong is very big, so I didn't want it to spill over. Oh, my goodness. Ah, uh, this is fun, dude. I love your podcast. I I think this is... What, can, can I ask you a question? Yeah. I'm sorry I'm taking over. No, I don't care. Anymore. Um, Out of, like, all of your guests, like, who is... Who has given you, like, the best tangible advice, like, so far that you've... I was trying to think of, like, what advice I think of the most. I don't know what guest it is, but, like advice I think of the, I always think of rejection is God's protection Jessica Kirsten said that to me when I was going through this most recent breakup and I don't just think about it in terms of the breakup I just said it on your podcast that we just did but the whole thing about like failure being liberating and it is and like get in like growth can also feel like loss yeah and I just really feel like I do feel like rejection it 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 does protect you like it it does yeah I also think that like resistance is part of that equation as well. I just want to make sure your mic is completely plugged in like that. Okay, cool. Um, I think that in when when you get like rejected too, like the fear of like starting over is very great. Sometimes sometimes it pushes you, right? Like I've been in situations where I'm like, oh, I'm gonna fucking prove this person wrong immediately, and then there's other times where I'm like feeling sluggish or whatever like I'm feeling the resistance about it like I was I also said on my podcast too like the the person that pushed me honestly to finish the shit up was you because you were you were like what do you mean like this is like basically ready to go like you keep saying you have like a page left what are you doing and it was just it's a very personal thing to me and like I'm not afraid of it being rejected at all I don't even care if anybody like buys it or sees it it's just the matter of it being done like the completion of it and like I'm like toying with saying what the last page is or not but like at at the end of it you just keep going you know what I mean like no matter what you're still gonna continue on and you're still gonna like grow from any experience and your resistance is going to only make that better once you push through it you know I feel like it's interesting because everyone says like you just have to stop caring what people think and it's honestly it's not something that you can just say and do Mm -hmm. it's it's just like it's something you have to experience life enough till you get to that point yeah and like I feel like I'm getting closer to caring. I'm, I just feel like I'm caring less about what the wrong people think. Yeah. And like I am coming out of like, I mean, I don't even think I can tell you. Like I used to every single time I looked at my phone, I would get hundreds of notifications of people just saying nasty shit. And now I'm like, oh, my God, I've really like created a community where mm-hmm. people love and support me. Yeah. And it's the most beautiful thing. And I just am like, I did that. Like I, mm-hmm. I like. I was able to fucking leave this really toxic world where I swear every fucking time I posted anything, anytime I looked at my phone, it was just like nasty. It was like nasty shit about me. it's fucked up. And it like made me paranoid to the point where if someone was like, Natalie, you look cute. I'd be like, are they making fun of me? Like it was just like that crazy. Dude, leaving that similar. And so I just feel like making 
like creating like a positive environment where there's just like no tolerance for people being shitty to each other and just like meeting people that are really awesome and just continuing to create things is is just I don't remember what I was saying it like it forces <laughs> <laughs> no it forces you to know like what what's important to you and like what who to care about what yes. they think and stuff yeah, like yeah, yeah. it when you create a community around like the things that you are truly rooted in and are passionate about and like those same people, like you don't have to chase those people. They just naturally appear in your life. And like, I mean, this is corny, but like in the same thing is with like any relationship, not even just like creative or work relationship, but like, I know people say, Oh, like you won't find like your person. If you're looking like you truly won't like truly. Oh, fucking speak of the devil. There he is. Hi, Hi. babe. <laughs> I feel like I've always been like Can you turn the AC on? Thank you. I'm dying. I've been like so serious in my like presentation of who I am and like I am a, just a very goofy person. I feel like Twitch has allowed me to like be ridiculous. Mm -hmm. It's like the first space I've created where I feel comfortable enough to be my ridiculous self mm -hmm. and I just want to carry that into my stand up and I want to carry that into my podcast and yeah. like I'm I don't know why for some reason that is like the first space that I'm able to do that but it's the medium that like molds to you dude like you just, it attract it came to you right? I literally just used to follow my mom around and like sing whatever <laughs> she was doing <laughs> Like that. she would make dinner and I, I would follow her around. I'd be like, mom is making chicken. Now she's cutting up tomatoes. Like that's literally what I would do my whole childhood. I like, just annoy the shit oh, out of my mom singing. Oh my God, me too, dude. I was, I am, am still, I'm still annoying and I don't give a fuck about it. Like, especially when we go home to like visit my parents now. Cause I'm like, that's just how I like show my love is like being fucking annoying. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't even care. <laughs> <laughs> He's nodding his head. I literally like I used to make up shows for my parents and I'd fucking I used to make up I've never told anyone this in my life. I can't believe I'm talking about it on this podcast. Um I used to make up when I was a little kid, um, songs to sing my dad in the morning to wake him up like I was his alarm clock. That's so cute. I know. Not even because he was like a he wasn't even a bad dad. I was just an early riser. <laughs> he just is a normal person. I bet he really loved that. <laughs> No, my mom would tell me, tell would tell me like go wake wake him up, and I would wake him up with my song. I'm sure she thought it was cute. I don't think he enjoyed he, it. He, dude, my dad loved that shit. You don't know my dad then. <laughs> He's sentimental as fuck. Oh my <laughs> as god. As fuck. I I feel like I'm very much like him in that way. Like I I remember like threads of information from like years ago in that way. That's awesome. Oh my god. I feel like that kind of the thing is like <coughs> that that kind of creativity and like that's why I feel really lucky to have parents that like encourage that kind of stuff. And like when I really think about it, like my parents are fucking artists and I am really proud of like who my parents are and like however the however they fucked me up so that I'm this person, I'm also very grateful for because that's how I feel too. Like they are like my dad was a photographer and he's a writer and my mom was a landscape architect and like she's a, a visual artist. Like yeah. my parents are fucking badass. <laughs> like they're old, they're hippies, they're fucking that's nuts. awesome. But they're artists. Like my bedroom was a dark room before I was born. Like it, that's so cool. It is cool. Like I'm proud of who my parents are even yeah. if they they made me crazy. <laughs> truly crazy hey man i feel you on that i feel you on that it was like it was really hard to like kind of not like tell my parents that but kind of tell them that like as i was going through it kind of like how you were saying do i have to tell someone why i don't like them i over when i first started therapy man it was so fucking hard to like not be like this is what I discovered today. <laughs> like, uh, you know what I mean? And like, this is how you fucked me up this time. But like, now I'm understanding like, well, I mean, they only know how to be parents away. Yeah. You know? And like, they're only, what would I have done in that scenario? Like now that I'm like older, I can like see like fucking, someone who's that age doesn't know what they're, you know what I mean? You kind of understand a little bit more. Definitely. I mean, it's hard. I, I still carry resentment, but I also still <laughs> can accept that, like, I love my parents. Of course, and yeah. I also, I my parents. at a certain responsibility, like, you have to, I mean, at a certain age, you have to start taking responsibility yeah. for who you are. And so, like, 
when there are fucking people that are adults walking around blaming their childhood for the person that they are, I'm like, you got to fucking take responsibility for who you are at this point. We've all had years to go to therapy and work this shit out. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And I mean, like, I think it's just accepting those parts, updating them and like, you know, like telling your, like your inner like person, like I'm not, (laughs) I'm not eight years old anymore. I'm like 30 and this is where I'm at in my life. And like, when you say those things out loud, like you begin to heal and then you're able to be a functioning member of fucking society. Totally. <laughs> Something I had to do. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My parents are. Your parents seem very cool. They're wackadoodles. Yeah. But like, who cares? Yeah. I'd rather be fucking wacky than like boring. <laughs> right. Imagine be. Um, imagine like sitting at home every night. Not doing anything. Yeah. Imagine how fucking bored you'd be. I'd have to smoke a lot more weed and that. I don't imagine know being how. someone who like, <laughs> imagine that dude. Like, yeah, we, we live. Like, I often forget, like we live a very like fun life, you yeah. know? And I'm like to be an artist and to actually like live life as an artist is like very, very, I feel very fortunate. I will say, I hope I do want at some point to like live a no- more normal, normally structured life. Like I do. You can do it. I, I do at some point want to establish my career enough that like I can make dinner and like mm-hmm. have a family. But I appreciate right now that like I'm able to experience life this way. Yeah. Soak it all up, dude. Catch crazy. as many flights as you can. <laughs> so funny sometimes if i showed my mom a guy that i thought was cute recently and she goes oh my god you're gonna hate me he looks like dad i'm (laughs) like she like she does that every time a guy is cute and i swear to god i have never it's he's never looked like dad (laughs) ever has your parent have your parents ever done this um never like oh look they've never compared no looks looks no but like my dad and Irish have a lot of similar like personal characteristics, like personality traits mm-hmm. that are fucking it's it's nauseating how similar. Really? Yeah. Yeah. There's a it some very like specific I won't like get that personal, but like very specific things of like how how they are as people. It's <laughs> so interesting. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I mean I just have don't think I've ever aesthetically gone for someone that looks like him. I've never like no he does he looks nothing like my dad like at all but no one I've never dated anyone that even looked a little bit like my, my dad. father is seventy years old <laughs> mine's seventy seven <laughs> <laughs> I get it <laughs> I mean hey. yeah. Mm-hmm. One time I like dated this older guy. He was like, and my dad. One time. <laughs> older, older guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my dad pulled me aside and he goes, Natalie, I, I just want to tell you, you know, at that age, he's probably fine. But in a few years, you know, things stop working. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I've heard about it. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. <laughs> my dad that like insane. my fucking. I love him to death. My dad likes to say gross shit like, "Oh, when you're not home, my sex life is way better." I'm like, "Ew!" Oh my god, that's so fucking gross. Ew! I've like, never heard him say that. That's so uh, funny. <laughs> well, okay. I I can't believe I haven't. I I was gonna. I can't even write a joke about this because I don't know where to begin. So my mom, she's only had one boyfriend since like my parents split up and his, f- his they are not together anymore his facebook bio was three words oh no tastes like chicken ah! 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 that's crazy i so badly wanted you to say female body inspector <laughs> i feel <FBI>. like <laughs> tastes like chicken is way worse it's disgusting like, what and i so badly want you to put that on a hoodie or something what, yeah. tastes, what tastes like chicken hopefully not his dick what Ew. the fuck tastes like chicken uh, I don't want to know. It really, it truly bothers me. It's always bothered me. And I've <laughs> never liked him because of it. 
It's weird. Like, I always liked my dad's girlfriends, like, whoever he was dating, I liked. But my mom's boyfriend, like, I hated him specifically because he was dating my mom and specifically because of his Facebook bio. The fact that you would put that in a Facebook, not even like an Instagram where we're like, haha, or like Twitter where we're like being kooky, you know? Like, Facebook is like where grandmas are. And like, <laughs> that's like one step away from LinkedIn. It's wild. <laughs> Oh, I want my mom to find someone. I I do, yeah, but not someone that tastes like chicken. Ew, so fucking <laughs> gross, dude. Ew, so ew. Wow. Uh, I know it's out of control. These, these dudes, men, these men will say anything. A They'll lot say it all. A lot of it's women. Disgusting. I'm guilty of this too. A lot of women will say, "Oh, you know, a, a guy's mature later. A a, twi- a 25 year old <laughs> guy is really like a 17 year old guy." No. It's it never they never mature because this man he was in his fifties and he was walking around with a Facebook file that said tastes like chicken. Oh my so, god! Yeah, no, that, thank you. That pass. Has no, it has nothing to do with age and and everything to do with whether they'll take a loss or not. Check please. <laughs> tastes like ch- chicken. shouldn't chicken. <laughs> so. I feel like you could definitely make a joke out of that somewhere, but I I was thinking about it, but then I was like I can't I. No, I'm not here to tell you what to do I, with I, your jokes. No, I, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know where to begin. Mm. Where <laughs> you could just, you know, I had ham Pulp for lunch. Fiction that shit and just start at the end. I know. I came home once and they. Okay, so I lived in Astoria with my mom. And like, you know how the buildings are all super close together. But like the back building, like a railroad style apartment my bedroom window like if i threw something out the window you could see it from the kitchen window in mm-hmm. the alley do you know what i'm talking yeah, yeah, yeah. about yeah 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 so i fucked some guy in high school and i threw the oh, condom God. i threw the condom out the window and my mom and her fucking taste like chicken boyfriend were laughing at the condom the entire week apparently it was there forever the condom never like washed away that i threw out my window into the alley and fucking Tastes like chicken ass boyfriend would always point it out and laugh about it to my mom. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> ah, tastes like chicken. Ah, you could have picked anything. Tastes like anything. Anything but chicken. Ah, gross. All right, should we pull an oracle card? Yes. Let's. Yeah. We have a new deck. Oh, my God. Look at those hand tattoos, Dun, baby. Da, da, da. Universal Folk Oracle by Anita Inverarity. Yeah. <laughs> I I brought my birthday books to the green room at Governor's. Ooh. Would you like to... Can you shuffle the cards? Yeah. This is a horrible shuffle, but it's fantastic. Do we want to? I'm just not looking. I like these cards. They're really pretty. They're very ornate. If anyone would like to send me an Oracle deck, please send me a message and I will give you my P.O. box. Oh, yeah. Or if you design Oracle decks or anything related like that, just send them to us or send us links. I'll buy your Oracle deck. We'll shout you out. You don't even have to send it to me. Just send me a link of one you want to see on the podcast and I'll buy it. Send me a $3,000 Oracle deck (laughs) and I will go into debt for you. Yeah. Pick your favorite. (laughs) So. All right. Cool. Should I? Do you want me to split it? I want you to do everything. How many? Do I pick? Four. Four? four. Okay. Let's. we'll We'll do this. To be an even four? Mm-mm. I'm doing it in a weird way, but I don't care because this is who I am. I split them. Okay, I feel like this one, obviously. Loyalty! <gasps> oh my god! Oh, that's so good for us. Wait, let me see! Oh my god! Responsibility, relationships, construct, and self-care. self-care. Oh, so, my God. Right now. <gasps> no, guys, this is what we've been talking about all day. And I just long. opened it to this. Oh, stop it. 
Stop. The vibes, the vibes, the vibes. Unmatched, unmatched. You guys don't even know what's up. Look 44. at this shit. Oh, wow. Loyalty, responsibility, relationships, construct, self-care. Crystal, emerald. Examine loyalties in, or in order to let go and strengthen healthy alliances. <gasps> The girl is adorned with emeralds, the stone of loyalty. Her faithful canine friend is a symbol of unconditional monkey. Monkey. Aww. Is, a is a symbol of unconditional friendship and goodwill. Aww. Which relationships need closer examination and which are worthy of your loyalty? Oh my God. Say thank you for the rainbow of relationships that have come to teach you. For these will be many and sometimes fleeting, but nevertheless beautiful and profound. <sighs> Loyalty can be a tricky construct and a big responsibility. Sometimes it is good to examine those loyalties that come about in your social circle. Allow the feelings to surface and understand that your loyalty can mean everything or nothing. Are you stuck in certain relationships because of an unwillingness to let go? Which connections make you feel at peace? Which connect there may be no need to distance or remove this anyone necessarily, but do look closely at your own relationship wow. within this idea of being loyal. Oh my God. Well, fucking, that's definitely perfect and exactly the vibes. Um, Damn. First of all, th the girl looks like you. Oh. Like, I don't know. It's me and Rory. Yeah. And I don't know, what's your birthstone? I believe it's turquoise. Oh, I was, I was wondering if it's emeralds because I think that the two that was mentioned, the other one is m April. Which is interesting. But that's so funny. Wow, the vibes. They really are. True. Definitely matched. I like this deck. I also I don't know if you I don't know if you did this on purpose, but like whoever this Oracle deck is by, the first three letters are the, their their name is A and I. Oh. Did you mean to do that? Yeah. <laughs> That's very cool. Oh my God. That was awesome. Ani, it's been a pleasure. Where can people find you? Oh my goodness. Please go follow. Just go to too much content live. Um, follow us. That's our website. That's our Instagram. Um, follow us there. Follow our, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're doing cool stuff. And then uh, my Instagram, Ani Moosh, uh, Ani underscore Moosh. Yeah. Wait, find hold me there. on. So Mother's Day. <laughs> Oh, it might have passed. just passed. Yeah, <laughs> it's okay. But you make you make candles. Mm -hmm. You make trays. I do it all. This is. Mm -hmm. You made this. Mm -hmm. You make trays. Yep. You make candles. Yep. Yep. Mm. <laughs> you make you make bathroom sprays for when people poop and it stinks. I do so many things. If you want to... You make art. You do coloring yeah, books. I do. It is all at your Instagram at Ani underscore Moosh? Yeah, I mean, there you Wait, can... how do you even spell Moosh? It's, <laughs> okay, this is how you spell all the things. You can find me. Ani underscore Moosh, A-N-I underscore M-O-U-S-H. There you can find links to everything in my bio. Uh, you can find my website, which is AniMooshMedia.com. You'll find too much content. You'll find my podcast, House Ho, H-A-U-S-H-A-U-X, House Ho. Natalie was just on. So just definitely go check out that episode. Um, we have like a fantastic, this, this card definitely also captured the vibe of that episode as well. So mm -hmm. definitely go check that out. And if you want to like support any of my art or buy any of my art or candles or merch or any of that shit, it's on uh, animushmedia.com um, or too much content live because we'll have merch and stuff up by then too. If you want to support the studio, uh, candles, hoodies, and the like. So yeah, Ani's art is in all my G Fuel photos. Oh okay. yes, it is. It is. It is. So yeah, thank you for listening. You can find me at Natalie Cuomo underscore mm -hmm. on Instagram, at Natalie Cuomo on all other platforms, youtube.com slash Natalie Cuomo. Don't forget twitch.tv slash Natalie Cuomo. Yeah. Guys, please like, review, rate, subscribe, comment. It's free. It makes a difference. And boy, does it make me feel good. <laughs> I love you guys so much. And I'll see you next week.